morning, everybody. Thank you for coming. Before, uh, before we start, while everyone's getting seated, if I could just please ask that anyone that has a cell phone with them, if they could please turn it off or set it to vibrate so we don't have any distractions during the press conference, please. We are here this morning to announce some good news about the hiring of a new men's basketball coach. And this is probably the worst kept secret in Chicago over the last four days. Uh, but I guess the old adage, good news travels fast, applies here. So to speak about that good news, here is Loyola Director of Athletics and Assistant Vice President, Dr. Grace Calhoun. Thank you, Bill, and good morning. Yes, that's exactly how I was going to start. I've been in uh, six media markets now, and I've got to tell you, you guys are good. Uh, I think we were about five minutes done with our, our deal with Porter, and uh, the news broke. So uh, I, I know that I'm going to have to stay on my toes here. What a great day to be a rambler. Uh, I feel blessed that I think I'm uh, day five or six on the job, and I've gotten to say that twice already. With first with the building opening, and now with beginning a new chapter in our, our history with men's basketball. Uh, we are gathered here today to introduce you to Coach Porter Moser, but first I want to take a few moments to, to talk you through the process, to make you feel as good as I feel and as members of our, our search committee felt in selecting Porter. As I began the process, I did what I've, I've done in every search so far, and that's to uh, develop that proverbial straw person to define the attributes, the characteristics that we think are going to be important in finding the right fit. And uh, there were several things that rose to the, the surface as being very important. Uh, and, and in developing this person, I, I want you to understand that I, I solicited broad feedback because I'm well aware of the fact that I'm just starting. And while I have great admiration for this fine university and have spent uh, many years uh, learning about the Jesuit traditions and uh, being a, a, a student of them as well, I certainly know what I don't know and uh, solicited that feedback broadly. Uh, most importantly through the student athletes because they're the people who are having the experience uh, whose, whose educations we will always keep at the forefront. I assure you that this is a fantastic job and that was only confirmed through the amazing interest that we had in it. Uh, I heard from commissioners, I heard from general managers of, of professional franchises, I heard from power coaches in the industry, uh, and they all had great names to recommend, but there were uh, a handful of names that kept coming to the surface, and Porter's was certainly amongst those. If I look at those straw man qualities, we started first and foremost with uh, setting out to find someone who truly understood the Jesuit mission uh, and who was going to live by that. Someone who was in, going to embrace the fact that we stand for education and that our, our athletics program, as all our co-curriculars, will always be integrated into the curricular experience and will work hard to find meaningful connections and bring that education alive for our students. We set out to find a person of integrity, uh, somebody who had uh, strong values and was never going to compromise those. I've worked in environments with people who have taken shortcuts, and I've, I've learned early that those shortcuts never pay, that we're building this for the long run and we're going to do it the right way. We set out to find someone with strong Midwestern ties. It quickly became apparent to me that those ties, those connections to the city of Chicago and to the Midwest uh, didn't come through as loudly and clearly in the past as I would like. Uh, we want to be visible in Chicago. We want to have a presence here. We want to be a program that the best and brightest think about and that starts winning and keeping some of that, that uh, homegrown talent at home. We wanted a top coach uh, because, again, we're all about the education. Someone who's going to come in make our players better athletes, but more importantly, better people, better students. We, we needed a builder. Uh, I'm well aware of the fact that it takes very different qualities to build something rather than just maintaining a program that's already doing well. 
We needed someone who would come in with the energy, with the vision, with the work ethic to get things done. Our student athletes felt it was very important to find someone who had himself been a successful student athlete and competed at a high level. Um, someone who had the credibility of having walked in their shoes, uh, knowing what it takes to balance being a, a top athlete, but also a top student at a very rigorous university. Someone who had been exposed to college athletics at the highest levels and wasn't going to be in intimidated, uh, was, was going to believe that, that we can get in that game and, and win those tough games. And lastly, but certainly uh, not least importantly, someone who was going to understand the value of coming in and being a partner with me, with, with Dr. Kelly, uh, Mr. Kelly, the, the president's cabinet, the university leadership, the coaches of the department, uh, so many of whom are, are here with us this morning. We know that men's basketball is our flagship, will be our flagship, but we wanted someone who is going to embrace the fact that we will do this as a team, that all of our programs are important, and that a healthy men's basketball program only helps everyone. So why Porter Moser? We loved the fact that Porter was a student athlete at a Jesuit institution and went on to be a graduate assistant coach uh, there where he played at Creighton University. He's had four years uh, working at St. Louis University, another fellow Jesuit institution. And it wasn't just window dressing for Porter to talk about how formative those experiences were and how strongly he connected with the Jesuit mission and would be someone who would live by that and be able to effectively sell that to recruits and student athletes. Integrity uh, in, in vetting Porter that was uh, a quality that, uh, in an unsolicited way, came up on everyone's list. Someone who's got an amazing work ethic that's going to go about things the right way, um, that has had the wisdom of, of personal and professional experiences to know how important integrity is and that that will never be compromised. A recruiter, uh, perhaps the, the thing that always surfaced in Porter's recommendations, somebody who's known out there as, as being someone who, who's going to work very hard, who's going to find the right types of student athletes, um, who, who has name recognition in important circles, but who has uh, the knack for identifying people of character who will fit the institution. Uh, it certainly meant a lot to us that Porter has worked under Coach Rick Majerus, um, has had great mentors, learned from some of the best minds, and uh, has the ability, again, to really teach our student athletes to ensure that they're getting the best educations that they can, and they're leaving us as, as mature young men um, capable of, of landing good jobs and contributing to, in a positive way to society. The fact that Porter's had uh, most improved players on his squad really speaks to his ability to develop young men. A builder, uh, Porter's a, a two-time former head coach. Uh, coach Majerus would say probably a three-time head coach and gives Porter so much credit for what St. Louis has done. If you look at his track record, it speaks for itself. Uh, someone who was able to take a program at Arkansas Little Rock that had a .142 winning percentage and change that in one year to a 620 winning percentage, which I think still stands as the biggest turnaround in Sun Belt Conference history. Someone who uh, compiled a, a 105 to 101 uh, career record in those seven years as a head coach, despite inheriting two programs uh, that both were last in their respective conferences the year before and someone who had the, the energy and vision to, to build those two programs and would bring those qualities to Loyola Chicago. He was a two-year starter at Creighton, known to be a very tough competitor. And being in five different conferences, I, I didn't underweight that in the deliberation. Uh, I've been in six now, and I think the, the ability to draw on what you've seen uh, different places to take the best of everything, but more importantly to figure out what fits at this this special institution uh, certainly was very important to us. 
And lastly, I mentioned the, the value of a partnership, somebody who's going to come in and, and work with everyone in this room to get this program built, because it takes a community to do that the right way. And it speaks volumes to me. We've got trustees here this morning. We've got fine boosters of the program. We've got Sister Jean. Uh, we, we've got uh, all of you. And we know we're all going to need to work together to get this done. But if we do, we can do it. Porter will be an infectious ambassador for the program. Uh, I, I enjoyed hearing Kate this morning tell me that she read the mis mission of the university and just felt that that was her brother in a nutshell. Um, you know, Carolyn, who so capably managed the, the department until I got here, to say she spent 10 minutes with Porter and, and she was just exhausted. He moved so quickly. Um, that, that's the type of energy we need in this program and that he's going to bring to the table. And having the, that wisdom, those values that are in sync, um, I just love the, the start we're getting off to, the fact we're going to build this the right way. And uh, again, I look forward to, to wonderful things to come and the, the help of, of all those in the room. I'd be remiss if I didn't say a couple of quick thank yous before I formally introduce our coach. Father Garanzini, um, his leadership, his vision, his understanding that athletics need to be relevant and having strong athletics will do nothing but enhance student life here at Loyola. We thank him for that. Dr. Rob Kelly for giving me this opportunity, believing in me. Mr. Tom Kelly, uh, affectionately, we've come to know the two of them as the Kelly brothers. And I have learned very quickly um, that they, they have been absolutely invaluable in terms of uh, providing me with the, the support, uh, the counsel, uh, to get through some of these uh, initial weeks and difficult decisions uh, in a, a, a very... Uh, very uh, directed, um, very um, thoughtful way. Mr. Al Norval, our namesake for the building and trustee. Um, Al was asked to be part of the search committee because we felt it was important to have someone who had a perspective of the program and who wanted to be right there every step of the way in helping us to get this built. Uh, folks internally, and I hate to name names because I'm, I'm going to miss a bunch, but I'd be remiss if I didn't point out uh, Tom Hitcho, Bill Behrens, and others who have uh, supported the program for years and really stepped up uh, during the interim to, to guide us through. And lastly, my husband Jason is joining me this morning. Um, every good leader needs a sounding board, someone who brings them back to center when they start going off track. And Jason's always been that for me, and I thank you so much for that. All right, without further ado, enough of me. Uh, the reason you've come this morning, Loyola University Chicago's new head coach, Porter Moser. Thank you, Grace. <clears throat> I won't put this hat on like they do in the, the lottery because I have extremely large ears and it looks terrible in hats. <laughs> My family's agreeing back there. You know, before, uh, before I get into some saying some thank yous and telling you a little bit about myself, I, I want to say the first thing is what I said to my press conference when I was named head coach at Arkansas Little Rock. Rambler fans and Rambler students that don't know Porter Moser soon will. Everything about me is about enthusiasm, passion, uh, family, and I believe it's all contagious. And I've, I've, I've got to know the people and I'm, that I'm going to talk about in the process. And a lot of people say I care about things. And I've been in some different searches and interviews. But your actions are what say you care. And the first time I talked to Grace, her passion that came over through her voice. And then when I got to meet the search committee, Dr. Rob Kelly, Tom Kelly, Al Norville, and how hard they worked. And you could tell the stories they were telling about the process. And their actions say they care so much about this place. And I want to thank them. I first want to start out by saying thank you to Father Garanzini. His passion in our meeting with him is he's very enthusiastic, very contagious, and that's what I'm about, his vision. I'm excited about what he, he has, to, the vision for this school. The connection that Grace Calhoun's coming in at the same time that I am is a big, big factor of why I'm so excited. I feel an instant connection with her and about what she wants to get done, and that means everything when you have a team working like that coming in on the same page. And I can tell you that because I had three athletic directors in four years at Illinois State. 
Um, but that passion, uh, her husband Jason, my wife and uh, Jason and uh, Grace went out to lunch uh, at the Final Four. And just their excitement, their family values, it's so un in tune. And when the scuttlebutt at the Final Four was going on about the worst kept secret that I was getting this job, the thing that kept on coming was, Porter, that's a perfect fit for you. It's a perfect fit. And it is. It is for me. And I look at uh, my Jesuit background, uh, playing at Creighton, uh, the education I got, the values that it came through there. I look at coaching at St. Louis University, uh, the type of student athletes we brought there. That's what was so hard. We had a very, very good team coming back, but the character in the locker room was outstanding. And that's what we hope to build here at Loyola with that. So I, I do thank the search committee on being there and the, the, your actions that say I care meant everything to me. I want to thank my wife, Megan, uh, who's been partner living through this coaching profession is unbelievably hard. Um, I'll talk more about her, but I'll, I will get emotional about this. Um, I have four kids. They, we were thinking about having our four kids here. I have four kids, ages four through nine. I have a daughter, nine, boy, eight, boy, six, boy, four. And it's mayhem at the Moser house. But I, we were going to have them there, but I was afraid my four-year-old Max would be wanting to simultaneously play catch with me while I was up here at the podium, so I decided not to. Loyola, the vision here. The, the, the other person I do want to, I'd be remiss if I didn't thank Jim Weitzel. A class act, human being. I've known Jim for a long time. To thank him for seven great years that he gave here, uh, meeting the players, they have high character, and I would be remiss to not thank Jim for his service here and his work ethic and the character, he, the man he is. Um, Loyola, why it's a fit. This, the stars have come and, you know, are aligning with what's going on. I grew up in Naperville. I was a son of a, a developer. Um, I took two programs over that were last place, that were decimated. At Little Rock, it was, there was no enthusiasm, no passion, no students involved. We went out. I went from everything to flipping burgers with the students to going out and in the dorms and speaking. My players are going to do the same thing. When it's freshman orientation, the, our guys are going to meet the freshmen. They're going to pass out schedules. They're going to help them move in if they can. But the student athletes at this university are not going to be an island like they're the, they're the basketball players. We have to engage the student body. I was amazed when Father told me that there was, you know, because when I was growing up, you know, at Loyola, I didn't think there was much, many kids that lived on campus. And just, I've just heard it went from 1,200 to 4,200 of students that live on campus. That's awesome. That new building is going to hold 46, 47. We're going to try to fill that thing with a lot of students. And enthusiasm is contagious. The, the atmosphere, it's about educating these student athletes in this community that Loyola is an option, that Loyola is a great option. It's got an unbelievable education. And now, and the reality is, student athletes, kids, they want facilities. They want the cool locker room. They want the cool arena. They, ha they, they now have this. This building with Al's name on it is first class. It's something to sell. It's something that the current student athletes can walk around and say, I have pride to be a Loyola student athlete. Pride as a student athlete is one of the top things that you have to have. When I, I walked through the weight room yesterday and watched the student athletes working out, how hard they were getting after it. A lot of pride, a lot of pride that's going on right now with that. Combine that with the education. Parents and students want the great education. That is here at, at, at Loyola. It's about educating these players. I've heard over and over, we got to get these kids. Illinois is a great place for talent. We got to get them to stay home. Well, we got to educate them. We got to get them on campus. See what's going on here. See this building. See myself. See, see the staff. See that the people at Loyola's actions are saying, I care. And that's what's so exciting for me to take over this program. You know, I've always said, I've had a deep, deep, strong faith, and I had, a, I had a, a stumbling block at Illinois State, and I won't shy away from that, but I said last four years, God's got a plan. And you look at that, and now that this has happened in this game, I say no doubt about it. No doubt about it. This is a perfect fit for Porter Moser and his family. I'm so looking forward to the traditions at Loyola, the Jesuit traditions, uh, the Horizon League. Um, I love that Butler is doing what it's doing. I don't love that the last... 24 hours, 10 people said, we're going to be Butler next year. <laughs> but I like expectations. I like passion. That passion, those expectations say, I care. I, I like that I'm coming into a program where it means something. There's a lot of programs out there that there, it doesn't mean anything. There's a rich tradition here. I was a junior in high school the last time they went to the Sweet 16. I was, 
I think my sister might have been born the last time, the year they were, I won't age her, when they won the national champion. I see everyone doing their math right now. Sorry, sorry, Katie. But um, I, I, they, there is tradition here. There are people here. I met a former player, Frank Hogan, talks about when he was here, how many coaches he's been through. I mean, he came to my office, a passionate, passionate man on the board of trustees. I love being in an atmosphere like that. We have a process. The way it's going to happen, it's a building. It's, I, one thing I learned from Rich Majerus, besides how to pick a restaurant, <laughs> is, is it's long-term, not short-term. Develop the program, don't develop a team. And that is so important to what my vision is here at Loyola. It's so important that it's going to take some time to, to set that bar high in terms of their work ethic in the classroom. And, and I told the team last night, whatever you do, whether it's in the classroom, representing your school, whether it's, it's anything, you put your name on it, that represents you, your family, and this school. And we have to set that bar high for what we're standing for and the ex excellence we're going to strive for. I thank you all for the opportunity. I thank my family. I, I'm so excited to be back home. Uh, my daughter is too. In St. Louis, she told me when she was leaving, she says, on the last day of school, Dad, I'm going to walk out and scream, I'm a Cubs fan. <laughs> and that's very tough to do in St. Louis, trust me. So excited to be back home, excited about what we're, where we're going with this program and, and working with all of you and the direction we're going. And I thank you for the opportunity. And like I said, those who don't know me, the students soon, very, very soon will. Thank you very much. Exactly. I, I've recruited Chicago a long time, um, being from here. Uh, at Illinois State, we signed one of the, back then they said, one of the biggest steals to come out of the city, Osiris Eldridge. Uh, worked very hard to get to know him. And great kid, great family. And he ended up being one, MV, Missouri Valley Freshman of the Year, three-time first-team All-League player, and I believe the second all-time leading scorer there. Uh, currently at St. Louis, our top two scorers this year was freshman Mike McCall here. And... Uh, Dwayne Evans from Nequa Valley, uh, right by my hometown, and just the high school coaches. I've done clinics here. I've run camps. Uh, I'm from here. The high school coaches. It's amazing how many high school coaches and AU programs have reached out to me uh, since in the last 72 hours. And more importantly, I've reached out to them. That, and that's the thing that that's probably the most important thing is I've reached out to them. And uh, it's been a crazy 72 hours. But I think my ties uh, is a big strength. Of, of what's going on here because I, I know people, people know me, they know that uh, I have integrity when I recruit, I, have, I get to know the family. Uh, it's like Mike, Mike McCall. You know, there's all different kind of people um, and I like the student athlete that's going to be successful here is, you know, his mother Sheila, great woman, you know, his sister Angel. You get to know the family. I told that to our team last night. I said, we sat around the table, I said, I'm not going to be one of those guys that goes around the table and say, all right, say your name, where are you from? And, I, you can't, I can't get to know you that way. I said, when you recruit, when I recruit, you're going to get to know me, you're going to, to know my family, I'm going to know your family, I'm going to know what you're about, and because that's going to tell me if you're going to be successful at, at the place I want, you know, at the school I'm coaching at. And so I told the players, we're going to, we're going to go out to lunch one-on-one. -on -one. You're going to sit in my, my office. We're going to, I'm going to get to know you that way. You're going to meet my family. It's not going to happen around a table. But recruiting in Chicago has been a strength of mine. I'm excited to do it. There's lots of great student-athletes. Uh, that have gotten away that need to be here at Loyola, and they soon will. Uh, Pat Longo, Loyola Phoenix. Uh, have you, I, I know you haven't really gotten a chance to see your team play, but the players that are here, see your team, do you have any thoughts about what you have next year currently? Yes, yeah, well. I, you knowing me, that, it was funny in the, in, with Grace, when she was doing my itinerary, I said, I want, you're allowed NCA rules two hours a week. And uh, I'm going recruiting Thursday, tomorrow. So I had yesterday and today, so I did, I did work them out yesterday. And a lot of high character kids. A lot of, they're they're going to work hard. They're going to play passionately. They're going to play the right way. They're going to play fundamental. Um, and uh, you can't judge them. I told this. I said, I'm not judging you in this hour. I'm judging your attitude. We're going to start from here with the work ethic, uh, the attention to detail, and uh, you know, how much you're willing to be part of a team. 
You know, they, they said in the interview, they told Grace, and, uh, when Grace was talking about it, we want someone to push us. We want someone to push us. And I told them, I said, you know, I'm going to stretch you. You know, a student athlete, they say they want to get stretched to a higher level, but sometimes it's hard. You know, a lot of people want to be want the, a basketball player and, and wear the gear and wear the stuff and walk around. I'm on the team. But some of them don't truly love basketball. And this team does. They, they really they want to get stretched. And I'm going to see how much they want to get stretched. I told them. I said, winning is very hard. I said, I have a championship ring from a Jesuit school at Creighton. I played in the NSA tournament. And I told them uh, that my, one of my favorite photos of all time in sports, and I'm a junkie, is Michael Jordan holding the championship ball crying. I said, what, you know why he's crying? Because how stinking hard it is to win, to be great. And I said, you say you want to get stretched, we're going to stretch you. And uh, a lot of character in the locker room, and we'll see you know, how things progress. Can you talk about just guys some of your offensive and defensive philosophy some of the stuff? Sure. I, I call it, I like to call it a, a, a controlled up-tempo. Really want to run. Uh, we want to run. I think the, the, the students like it. We, we, uh, the student athletes like it. I think we have to recruit to that. We have to recruit to an athleticism that can get up and down the court, get easy baskets. Um, but working with Rick, I've had the controlled in front of it in, in terms of being uh, really on top of ball possession in terms of not crazy passes, but valuing the ball, you know, valuing the possession. And, uh, but I really think the atmosphere we can create in there, uh, in that arena with the home court uh, atmosphere, can be an up-tempo uh, style. It can be, we run a high ball screen offense that I call my 20 series that, that we run, and, we, and you, have to, you have to recruit to that offense. You have to recruit to that offense, and you have to develop kids on how to learn how to come off ball screens. And it, it, it is a skill. Um, defensively, man-to-man uh, -man about 85% of the time. I love, you watch the NCAA tournament, you watch VCU uh, do some changing defenses. I love coming out of timeouts, I love changing up, uh, trapping, running some zone, changing up, uh, but very aggressive. Rick is, uh, I always had very good defensive teams, and I just think that's, you know, talking about the, God's plan. I got a chance to really learn from one of the greatest minds out there. He's truly, and you know, I, I was able to step back and say, hey, this is what I loved about my seven years. This is what I thought, it affirmed what I was doing right. And I looked at it and I said, this is what I need to do better. And that's part of growing. Like, like Grace said, I won 100 games at, at taking over two bad teams. I've won road games against Big East teams. I've won road games against Big Ten teams. I've beaten SEC teams with that. But I probably learned more from my losses than I did that. And working for Rick, I learned uh, defensively, just a, a, a lot of game planning, so much more on the detail, um, and so I'm excited to, to take what I learned from him as much and put it to our man-to-man -man defense. That was one of his strengths. Garrison Carr from my 87 Sooner Radio Station on campus. Uh, do you have a scheduling philosophy and uh, do you think we can uh, expect improvements in the non-shopping schedule? Well, yes, I, you can already, I, the schedule we have already is you're going to, you're going to, your eyes, my, your eyes are going to do what my eyes did. <laughs> look, 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 we're playing some very good teams, and you want to do that. You want to compete against the best, and you have to recruit to that. Um, there is a, a huge scheduling philosophy with the RPI and everything, and, and there's, there's a way to schedule up, to schedule better opponents, to get people excited, and to have a resume that it just isn't um, a team where you've got to win your tournament to get in. The horizon's been that way. Butler's changed that mold. Now, they've recruited. Their roster is recruited to that and I think we are going to go to that too and you to play those kind of teams I want to get I don't want to get these 10 for 2 contracts where we're having to go on the road and you know take it you know take it for 10 games and they get they only come here once I have a philosophy I, I want to get these one for one contracts I want to get one for ones in here against teams I have a lot of con uh, contacts I did that at Illinois State I had Cincinnati home and home one uh, for one game each I had St. John's a one and one uh, at St. Louis, I had Nebraska one on one. Boston College, another fellow Jesuit school, one for one. Uh, Georgia, one for one. Getting Washington, one for one. Right when I left, you can do that. You can build through relations and hard work and, and a philosophy about scheduling up. But you have to recruit to that because you don't want to decimate your team. And but you have to recruit to that. Uh, but it, it is how you're going to get your team to get to to get the NCA board to look at it and say, you know what, their resume says. That, that they, they can get an at-large bid. Any other questions? Lindsey Wilhite, Daily Herald. How often during the uh, 
the courtship process here? Do people bring up Butler? You, you've already mentioned Butler a couple of times. Is that kind of where people are hoping, thinking, expecting this place to, uh, to be and become? Not only in our league, but every mid-major in the country. It's changed, it's changed the philosophy of everything. But, you know, they've, 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 they've had a program. They're, they've developed a program. Uh, I know in recruiting circles, I was recruiting at St. Louis in Atlantic 10, we were going after kids that were, it was between this Big Ten team, this Big Ten team, St. Louis and Butler. Then you go to another kid over here, it was this Big Ten team, a couple, you know, Xavier there and Butler. Butler's recruiting circles and the players are signing are high level players. That's, that's where we're going to go with here. But it's an education process. It's an education process because right now, you, you, you say to the kids, Loyola, they, they, don't know what, they don't know this. They don't know what's going on here. And they soon will, but they don't know yet. And it's, it's going to take some time to educate them that, hey, this is a great option to get a great education, to get developed, and to play in a great league. I mean, the horizon isn't up. Horizon's arrow is going up, and there's no question about it. Not only Butler, I mean, the Cleveland States, the Milwaukee's, uh, you know, there's a lot of good teams. Detroit is loaded. Uh, there's a lot of very good teams in here that makes up top to bottom the whole league. Any other questions? Or could you say something about the status of your staff? Yes. Um, I'll probably be announcing uh, one staff tomorrow. Um, I will say that, uh, thank goodness I have a phone plan here, at, to my cell phone, because I've had about 600 calls because everybody's got a guy that I've got to hire to get a player. And uh, I won't do that. I'll tell you my status of my staff. My status of my staff is going to be a reflection of me. It's going to be someone that has uh, high energy, high passion, that has a, can develop kids, that has a, a integrity. Uh, I won't bend in compliance. I, I, won't, uh, I won't jeopardize my reputation. I won't jeopardize this university's reputation or my family's. So I want, I, I want an assistant coach that has those values because sometimes an assistant coach might do something. But the bottom line, he's on my watch. And I understand it, and I accept that responsibility, so I better do my homework and know who I'm hiring and feel that I know them, that they know the same values as me. I expect to hire somebody, announce somebody tomorrow, uh, and then to, the rest of the staff will be shortly followed after that. Thank you. Anything else? Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. If anyone needs to talk to them one on one or in a group session. Thank you.